and the it, and the creation of the internet, um, or not the creation, but the popularization of the internet and the commercialization of the internet, and suddenly the the take up of the technology, they happened basically at the same time, you know, in the 1990s. And so the internet from the very beginning um, was imbued with this utopian globalized vision of the technology, which uh, posited that it's beyond the state, it's beyond a certain society, it's beyond any government even. It sort of floats on top of the world. It sort of hovers out there in cyberspace, you know, and, and basically in heaven, and that it's sort of almost above human affair. It's above politics, it's above geopolitics for, cer for certain. And that, you know, once you like log on to AOL or, you know, later Yahoo and then Google and, uh, you know, Apple and uh, and you do all and you're on Twitter and you're on Facebook you're like beyond you're above geopolitical concerns we're just all one humanity you know communicating in unison together um you know it was an interesting uh, idea it was an interesting mythology and and and, and, and I mean it's you know only recently actually during the Trump uh, era um really started to get chipped away um and the way that i attacked it in the way i started thinking about it and, crit and critiquing that, that this ideology is i started when i started you know writing my book um surveillance valley i kind of wanted to understand you know where, where the where the internet came from uh well you know what's the starting point for this and you know once i started kind of going back to the to the very origins of the technology of the technology when it was developed during the vietnam war by the pentagon as a way of creating a new command and control to system technology, but also was a way of developing new data uh, tools and tracking tools to fight counter to fight insurgencies. And as part of, sort of counterinsurgency weapons, I found out that like, you know, the, this, the military's role and the US government's role in this technology um, that then became the internet never really left. I mean, it's, it was there from the very beginning, but it also, but, but at every state of evolution, you know, going back, going into, you know, the creation of, let's say of, Google as a company, um, you can see the arm of the U.S. government um, either underwriting the technology that see the arm of the U.S. government uh, and the fingerprint of the U.S. government at every step of the way. And so, um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's almost silly now to think that uh, you know Google is not part of the U.S. government uh, in the in the in the same way that it's silly for people to think that you know TikTok is not part of the Chinese government or something like that. So it's such an accepted now uh, view that. Yeah, just a few years ago, it was seen as heresy, and I got, you know, I was attacked and just, you know, mocked and and belittled for 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 implying that um, American Silicon Valley companies are actually um, extensions of the U.S. government and and of the American empire, um, and aren't just like these totally uh, abstracted entities um, floating, you know, somewhere up, up in the stratosphere. Yeah, well, something that you you document in your reporting in your book, which is just objective, and, and it's something that I didn't even know until I read your reporting, is that all of these big tech companies have huge contracts with with the U.S. national security state. I mean, some people, of course, now know that because, like I said, in the past few years, I think your, your thesis has just become so transparent that it can't be ignored yeah. anymore. But so, for instance, we know that Google has contracts with the CIA. And of course, Amazon does as well. Google has contracts with local de police departments, you point out, that they use for police surveillance. Mm -hmm. Google was involved, I learned from your book, in the Iraq War, and they were working with the U.S. military on mapping programs in Iraq. I mean, so we're talking about that not only do they have their origins, like you just said, in, in the Cold War and developing counterinsurgency technology against communist and socialist movements around the world, but yep. so, you know, they, they were created through... They have their origins in DARPA and the Pentagon research, but also still today, they're U.S. government contractors. Yeah, I mean, look, I mean, Google is such a perfect example of, of a company that is just no matter where you kind of poke it from which from which angle, like you you see just again, you see the role of the U.S. government um, in its development. I mean, just just going even back to the research that uh, into a superior way of finding information, you know, um, that that then became um, this algorithm that was called um, uh, Backrub, and then it was renamed just to PageRank, and then that that algorithm became kind of the the core of Google when it was privatized out of Stanford uh, by Sergey Brin and Larry Page. I mean, their research into this stuff was was um, underwritten by uh, by DARPA, by the FBI, um, by other f federal agencies, and, and because um, 
uh, American sort of law enforcement and, and, and intelligence agencies, they were, um, were looking at like this chaos that was erupting on the internet, you know, all these different sites that were sort of like linked together, but there was not a central index for anything. So it was almost impossible to find anything. And the early search engines that that were created were really shitty. They didn't, they, I mean, they, 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 there, there was not a good way of actually figuring out how, how to sort the information you know, and to create um, something that could be easily searched. I mean, so they, they seeded, uh, you know, a, a program that, that spanned multiple universities in, in, in America to, to, to create a, a better um, um, search algorithm, to create a search algorithm. And so Google came out of that program and was underwritten entirely by the U.S. government and by the security state part of the U.S. government. And so, and, this, and then, so that created the algorithm, you know, and then once Google became a company, one of the first things that they did was contract that technology, that search technology, out to the CIA and to the NSA. Uh, these agencies uh, basically bought these Google boxes that they installed in their own internal um, data warehouses that you know crawled CIA data, internal data, crawled internal NSA data, and created and search the internal um, data of these intelligence agencies. And I, I and I know that the CIA even modified the Google logo uh, internally on their internal. That the you know the the crest of the CIA was in one of the was in one of the O's, uh, and they actually asked Google for permission to do that because they're kind of you know messing with their with their with their brand, and so Google gave that permission to the CIA, you know, and and then of course you know then when Google went on this sort of buying spree and started buying up all these different startups, including the the startup that became part of Google Maps, that company was developed with uh, grants uh, with investments from Incutel, which is the CIA's sort of venture capitalist arm, uh, venture capital arm. And so, you know, Google Earth uh, was, that became Google Earth and, and that became part of the suite of um, products that Google offered to private clients, but also to government clients. And then w when the Iraq war broke out, um, uh, Google was working with the Pentagon to, um, to integrate Google Maps into the kind of the the the, the war machine, you know, into the in, in, into the invasion forces, so you can like put put down where the where where different um, where different assets and where different troops were and things like that. And so, and that's just the very very beginning of the company. And that's in the early 2000s. And so at every stage of the way, you you see Google um, involved in the U.S. government. And so. Um, you know, and then of course, you know, to the, to the illusion, these are the, the these are the companies, you know, these giant companies that were uh, a lot of the, a lot of the stuff, a lot of the technology that they're that they're releasing is based on government research, you know, and but then what what shocked me was that even the the companies that or the the tools that are supposed to sort of fight against the, the U.S. government that are supposed to protect you from big corporations spying on you on the internet are also part of the U.S. you know U.S. national security state. Uh, tools like Tor and tools like Signal, the, the encrypted chat app that's sort of blown up recently. You know, these are also funded and sometimes fully created by the U.S. government. Um, and so, so not only is like are these giant corporations part of the U.S. empire, but also these supposedly radical tools, kind of grassroots technologies that are supposed to protect you from the U.S. empire, right? And from the from from the U.S. surveillance state are actually also funded by the U.S. surveillance state. And so there's like when you go on the Internet and you start looking around, you realize that like there is almost nothing on there that isn't tied um, to the American, you know, the U.S. national security state. That's just in America. And of course, when you go outside of the country, you notice that obviously the sim a similar, um, I think a similar um, rule kind of holds that f frequently, you know, technology companies are, hip to whatever the, the the state that they've emerged out of uh, it is so whether it's in Russia or China or, or whatever but in you know speaking to, in terms of you know, Amer American companies yeah like the entire internet the the the, the opposition to the internet you know in, in in embodied in technologies like Tor and signal they're all part of the same US national security state it's like it doesn't matter where you go you just you just see it you know you see fingerprints of it all everywhere. And so, uh, yeah, that's what my book is about.